Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. So, I'm pretty excited. The uh, song that I was going to re record, and I was like halfway through it, I'd already done the uh, guitars, drum, and bass, um, put a lot of effort into it, and it did sound better. <clears throat> but uh, ultimately, I decided on the channel, and others uh, confirmed the fact that um, the first one, the vibe was hard to top. It had a lot of technical glitches, and it overall does not sound as good as my new recordings, but I've been able to sort of massage it and we'll work on it more now. And also the other song that's called The Fighter has the same issue. Once I get these two songs, you know, sounding better, I can move on, start my next thing. I started on uh, that You Get Me High song and I think I've already aborted it. Um, I started on drums, you know, just starting working it up the other night when I left here. I could just feel myself going down the same path that I had done on a couple other tunes where the song is not quite there, but I want another song to work on, you know, and I want to start, want to finish the record, want to have stuff for the, the camera to do, you know, like new material and just get it done. That's the whole goal, you know, and uh, I was just, I don't want to go and start another song that I'm half-hearted about and then feel like the track is just like by the time I get to the vocals I realize the track is not there and it's just a bum out you know so I would rather get these songs sounding as good so like right now I have I believe six songs or seven that I'm super happy about just need three more two to three more uh, and they have to be really good you know because I've already I feel like I already have filler I want the rest of it to be you know killer so, that's what I'm going to do. So right now, let's just listen to the playback on this one in mastering mode. And I'll go over what I do in mastering mode. This one's a little unusual uh, compared to what I usually do. Usually it's much simpler. And I have a video that I've kept that I just put up to show you know what, what I do in mastering mode. This one I think is a little different. Okay, so the whole point of this, in case you haven't followed any of this and you're just tuning in looking for assistance with your zoom. I recorded a couple songs a while back, up to two years ago, and uh, I liked the songs a lot, and I liked what, how they felt, and I thought the recordings were pretty good. But I continue to make videos, I continue to record songs, I recorded probably ten more since then. I'm only going to use like half of those songs, but I recorded like, you know, ten more tunes since I made these original two recordings. And uh, those recordings got a lot better got better recording drums, better signal to noise ratio. Uh, just like the snare, when you isolate it, bigger, better, you know, just better. Same thing with the bass drum, the overheads, everything. Go to guitars. I don't know why exactly. I don't know what I was doing differently. I know I was using a guitar that was making a lot of noise. But, you know, a lot of time in the saddle since then. I do less, I do less stuff with the zoom, less effects going in. So I started picking different things to use on the Zoom and realized some of the stuff I was using was causing me issues. So it was stuff like that. It's just discovery stuff that made the, the recordings get cumulatively, be cumulatively better than you know the original ones. So the point and the goal is to get these songs at least somewhat in that same ballpark. And I think I've done it. Plus, you know, as I've mentioned before, vibe and energy make up for a lot of technical glitches. Because on this tune, right away at the beginning, when you first hear the guitar, there's like this noise because the pickups are really noisy. It was a squire. This one's much quieter. It still makes noise because it's a single coil pickup and no shielding, but uh, it's okay. You know, it's it's the kind of noise that you expect from a Strat. This one was a little louder, so that's always there. Uh, but it's kind of you know has character. Mainly, it was the drums getting the snare drum up, and from another video you might have watched. I stacked the snares up, added several snares. So, what I usually do is on the back row, I mic four drums, and I double each one. Not double, you know, playing them twice, but just taking the track, snare, snare one goes into the hard drive of the Zoom on the computer, then I call it snare B, snare A, snare B, drag that in, now I have two snares, and I place them at 17, and 18. And then I do that for each track all the way down the line until I have eight tracks of drums. Four tracks doubled. But the snare was just not popping. It wasn't separating. 
So on tracks on the second row, which is tracks, uh, let's see, there'd be 16, 15, 14, 13. Those four tracks I loaded up with copies of the snare drum. So now there's officially one, two, three, four, five, six snare drums all playing at once. And that's what it took to get it to you know, stand out and pop the right way. Then on guitars, which is on row one, I had two guitars and I was panning them out to get more of a nice kind of stereo spread. But when I was doing that, I was kind of losing the middle, you know, the main middle, the mid-range of the song, you know, the, the, where the action is. So I made another copy of one of the sides. I picked, so I have a ceramic speaker, I have an Alnico speaker. The ceramic speaker is more direct and usually about 2 to 3 dB louder than the Alnico. It's just a softer delivery, it's a different style of speaker. One hits hard, one kind of diffuses. And uh, I picked the ceramic to, to, to double so that you'd get that kind of hard dynamic one right down the middle and then off to the split is the Alnico and the other and the same ceramic split out 50-50 with one right down the middle of the track and that did a lot. I had an acoustic guitar that I had used to double this to give it more of a uh, percussive feel you know, like sometimes if you double and put an acoustic guitar in there it gives you a little more zing just a little something some wood in there but uh, it wasn't helping and once I put that third guitar in, the guitars were good. Vocals were kind of a nightmare when I recorded them. I was using another mic setting. I think it was Big big Shape and Dual Mic. Now I just use the first mic on Mic 1. And it's the very first one. It's the driest, straightest, least effective, not too compressed. Compressed enough, but not like overly squeezed. Uh, I used to use Big Shape, like I said, and um, I'm glad I switched over to that one because this one, the vocals were barky, you know, like having to sing hard at the beginning and other times you're not singing as hard, so you have to sort of get a happy med medium, you know, where it's not barky and it the, the signal works, you know, it's coming in good and strong. So that was a pain, and that, now I'm so glad I'm not re-recording because I don't even want to think about having to do those vocals again. Okay, so, mastering mode. And when I played this back a minute ago, it didn't sound bad at all where I had it set up. So, before you start anything on mastering mode, pull your volume level down on your fader because it's going to be a lot louder than it is when you're just tracking. I keep, I keep hearing like the uh, reflection of my voice reverberating and it makes me realize how much sound is, you know, doing its thing in this room. I probably need to come up with some better, um, something to uh, dull it a little bit, you know, a little more insulation, so to speak, more room treatment. Okay, so mastering mode. Make sure you pull that fader down and you go to effect. And it's in mastering. And the patch is number double zero plus alpha. The input screen, master, and that's important. Make sure you choose that. Then I'm gonna go to edit. Once I go into edit, on, uh, on originally I'd done all these crazy things like I said now I can see that it's basically in the usual setting on the first page at least the three band compressor I've got the crossover low at uh, 50 the crossover high at 50 sense high mid 5 low 5 and I do that a lot now on the mix high I've got that 2 2 5 the mix high the mix mid the mix low 2 2 and 5 I need a little more bass and need a little less treble Normalizer, the gain is at zero. Three band EQ, five, three, five. So bass five, middle five, treble five. Uh, maybe had to pull back that mid range just a bit. Patch level is at 24. My ZNR is off. I don't like any kind of noise reduction. Okay, let me turn on this thing. Hopefully it's plugged in. Yes, it is. Thank God. Okay, hold on. Let me get the. Uh, I need the cable that attaches these. I'll be right back. And then that way we can get. Oh, wait, wait. It's right here. I can get playback together. There it is. Okay, so now let me put the headphones on so I can get my reference point. You'll be able to hear through that speaker. I wish it was stereo. I should hook this up too, but time is of the essence. Okay, um, all right, let's just see what happens. I'm going to just mix on the fly. And then I'll stop it for a second. We'll just do it. We'll play it back.
I'm going to add bass to the uh, mastering. I go to edit. I go to low, add seven. Okay, on since low, I went to seven. On mix low, you can only go to six, and I've gone to it. Just felt like I needed a little bit more bass. Got to make sure these snares aren't peaking because they're all turning red. I, I want as much snare as possible, but you can't, you know, go over the edge with it. The other thing I did is I'm going to pull the drums down a little bit and I just push the, the overall volume up. So instead of having it so low on the master, I'm going to go to 10, minus 10, and then bring the drums down. I think more master will, will bring more tone instead of trying to bring that down and the drums up, if that makes sense. come down a little bit to like between negative 10 and negative 20. So that's the ultimate point here where I've got the drums pushing as hard as possible without going into the red. Because the whole point is to get more, you know, more badassery on the uh, drums. Okay, let's add the bass. Okay, the bass I have two channels worth. Let's see if I did any splitting or if I did any panning. So yeah, so I did a left right 50-50 and you could dial that back to make it more down the middle. Actually, let me see if that helps. Might like that better. Uh, not not panned out right down the center. The two bases just sounds like more. Hold on, let me hear that by itself for a second. It sounded like something weird happened. Just the bass, you know. I guess it's just the string rattling. At the volume, it's I mean, the levels at 60.
playing guitars. Still trying to push that snare up as much as possible. The guitars are in. Okay, so let's see. Um, now I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna go back and mix in the. Um, I think I have everything up now, except for the vocal. Okay, so let's see what happens now. <clears throat> I'll start adding the vocal in. So let's isolate those vocals for a second, just deal with that. There's a, probably a lot of reverb on there, it sounds wet. Okay, let's go and see what I put on there. Okay, I'm going panty cue all the way to number one. Whew, the highs are minus 10, listen to this crazy stuff. The EQ on the vocal is minus 10 on the high, mid is five, low is nine, reverb send is 10, so there's not much Reverb and chorus are both at 10. Whew. So you can see I had to do some crazy stuff. Listen to this other uh, vocal that goes and probably does low harmonies and stuff like that because uh, I usually do several things on one vocal track. That's minus 6 on the high. 5 mid low is 8. 10 and 10 on reverb and chorus. Why do I have so much reverb on that? Oh, on the guitar I have reverb of 30. Huh, that might change. Okay, I'm isolate. Are you ready for life? Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for love? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ooh. Okay, there's a hook. Second verse. Are you ready for school? Are you ready for work? Are you ready for sex? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Cause I don't want death hanging by my door. This is not the end now, that's for sure. Okay, so what I did with the vocal because I had so much trouble, I remember now. As you can see, I had to do a lot of EQ manipulation, which I don't like. Like on these songs I'm saying that are recorded better, there's no EQ manipulation. I might add a one or two of something, but overall, it's there. So I hate, I, I hate it looking at that, you know. But I'm going to rescue the track because this sounds better than what I'm going to record in the future, trust me. I won't be able to get this vibe together. The vocal's not hard to sing, I just won't get the vibe together, just like I didn't get the vibe together on the drums and the guitar and the bass. So, what I did was, because there was so much barky vocal, I had to use three of them and pull them down. So I pulled the levels down, but then add, it's kind of like what I do with the guitar and snare, is stacking. It's like stuff I don't really like doing, but I had to rescue this track. Okay, so, 
I stack the three vocals that are the same. You know, so what you do is you get the vocal sounding the way you want it. You take it into the computer, pull it off. I made two copies, dragged them in. Now I got three lead vocals, and they're taking up one, two, and three. I have a double on the chorus where I just double the chorus just to give it a little more gloss. You know, I'm actually double singing it. I sat here with the headphones and sang along to it. And that's the only doubling in the tune. I just add a little bit on the chorus. And then this track here, number five, has low harmonies. I don't want to die, don't want to know. Like a Bowie, Peter Murphy type thing. About the other side. And then there's a, I don't think there's a high harmony on this. Just that. And the extra. So those sound, you know, like a lot of people doing it. I remember watching the Godard film, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, which is incredible. Rolling Stones movie, where uh, they show them the freaking studio burned down while they were making this movie, but or caught on fire. But they're recording the track "Sympathy for the Devil." It's incredible, and uh, Godard just slowly tracks, you know, through the studio. There's Brian Jones tracking, Keith Richards playing bass, Mick Jagger, you know, doing his thing. It's incredible. And at the end, they're like, hoo hoo! You know, they're doing the hoo hoos. And they have all their, you know, Marianne Faithfuls there and the whole crowd. And I was like, oh, that's how you get that kind of stuff to sound right. Is you get a lot of people, a lot of voices. Well, I don't have a lot of people, but I can sing it three times. And you don't try to sing on it, like, hoo hoo! You can have a little overlap. So it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like kids, you know? It can be certain songs like, Pink Floyd and Talk Talk, you know, have like uh, songs that have children choir, children's choirs, you know, you get that feel. A bunch of voices together. It's cool. All right. Enough of my yakking. Okay, so. Highly recommend Sympathy for the Devil by uh, Jean-Luc Godard featuring the Rolling Stones. Okay, so I'm going to turn everything on. And we're just going to see what happens. Got the vocal isolated. Let's just see what the, where the action is. I'll fine tune it by just getting it all on. Because I think we've heard each thing isolated enough to know what to do. drums are kind of laid back on this on this recording. I think that I was, uh, the guitar on the new recording, I don't know, I just never felt like it was syncing with it. This, the drums sound like laid back behind the guitar track. I don't know. Okay, right there. Hold on. Let me just start it over. I got to get a little more gas on that vocal right there. On the vocal on this, you have to write it the whole freaking time. Oh, the joys of this tune. You gotta write the vocal the whole time, I forgot. Because, ah, man, I told you, this is, <laughs> this is why I tried to re-record this song. It's like, it has so many issues. Whew, okay, so let me, sorry, I keep starting this over. If I have any people left <laughs> watching still.
hear all that noise off that guitar. That zzzz, I had be long faded out after you know before then. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can do with it, and I'm really tired of it. So, so I uh, kept talking so much I didn't realize the camera had um, cut off, but. I feel okay uh, about the song. I, I like the way the song sounds, and I like the the energy of the tune. And I, you know, still want to keep it in the. I definitely want to keep it on the record. I think it might open the record. Like it feels like an opener that. And I, you know, I've used it for my my uh, channel. So I still like the song. I think I like it better right now because I feel like I've salvaged this and made it um, doable. I would expect it to come in here and do this in like 15 minutes, but it was a little bit longer than I thought. So I'm not going to do the other song. I was going to work on the fighter, but I'll do that when I come back. And I've got an incredible week lined up. I don't know if it'll be many videos. It may be a while before I, I'm back on camera uh, because I'm going to um, work with the other guys. We're missing John, the drummer. He can't make it uh, due to a scheduling conflict. Uh, but we have Mark, the guitar player, Alex, the bass player, me, the singer guy. And, uh, man, I'm excited because we're going to work on songs, work on some of these songs that I've, I've been recording and see if we can figure out a way to do them live, you know, with the band. Because I've been so egocentric about this stuff, I've just kind of pictured me doing it. And now we're trying to figure out how to integrate it into the group. And I was thinking, like, for, like, the song Hell Yes, uh, which is a different type of tune for us to do. Usually we do stuff more like this song, you know, like, more straightforward rock, 4-4 four, four time, like, rocking hard and fast, the kind of punk, you know. And uh, with some heavy rock, you know, type stuff mixed in. It's like hodgepodge of the 20th century type stuff. And, uh... So what I was thinking is since we usually do that kind of approach for a song like Hell Yes, it has more of that kind of bluesy feel. Have me do like the Muddy Waters thing where like if I have a guitar, maybe I don't even have a guitar on some of these songs. I'm just a singer because I've done that many times in a band. But when I have the guitar, instead of like playing the, both of us playing the lead riff, you know, instead of both of us going... When you're doing that chicken thing, it's it's kind of a it's your own groove. It's hard to get with somebody else's groove exactly. Like the guitar player's doing his thing, bass player's doing his. Thing. Gee whiz, sorry. I noticed it was dying the whole time I was talking to you. It was like blinking about to die. So, the point being is on these new songs that are kind of like more blues rocky. I mean, I'm trying to get more and more into that. You know, I just don't want to make a bunch of crap songs trying to do a new genre. That's what I'm worried about right now. It's like, I had a couple good ones pop when I switched into this style, and now I'm stuck just with a bunch of mid garbage coming out. So maybe this week, working with them will you know set off some new stuff. But um, it's an incredible opportunity, you know, to be able to work with them again, and because uh, this is the band that I you know I did my thing with, and uh, we got pretty far. Uh, it was kind of our own decision to end it. A lot of stuff was going on, but um, we had a lot of we we got pretty far, you know, in the music industry. So, uh, and I think the reason is because they were so good, you know. Just I wasn't a musician like that. Like I was always last chair, last chair French horn, last chair tuba. These guys are like first chair, you know what I'm saying? So, whole different level of musicianship. I'm more of like a singer songwriter dude. These guys are like for reals, you know what I mean? So, it's really uh, quite an opportunity to get to play with them. I don't take it lightly. So, I was picturing like not playing the guitar, so not to not clutter it up, not. So, and instead, come in on the course. That kind of thing. So that you're not. Both guys aren't trying to stand on each other. One, gu one guitar says it all, as Steve Albini once told me. One guitar says it all. So I took a lot from that, you know. Because a lot of times we're just trying to stack and trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more and more and more. Sometimes, you know, with this kind of music, a little space is required. So 
I can't wait for this week to come up. I'm still going to be having to do my regular life stuff, but we're going to be in a, in a house together because we still lived together like the monkeys, you know, back in the day in the 90s when all the big stuff was happening. We lived together and it was incredible. I highly recommend that if you're a young person and you're like in a rock band or any kind of band, I don't even know if people are in rock bands anymore, but whatever kind of band you're in, whatever you're doing, try to live together. It's like, it's incredible. It's like you become a family. Uh, being in, in you know in each other's back pocket like that, there's just something that happens. It's also really annoying. You'll end up hating each other in some ways, you know, and fighting and stuff. But <clears throat> you'll get some creative stuff that's incredible if you live together because you get the same brain. When you live with people, you get the same brain. So I highly recommend that. Go live with your band. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. I, it's just like thinking about all these people being so cool. It's incredible. Thank you so much. Love you. And uh, I can't wait to have this week. I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if I'll have many videos, but um, uh, it's going to be good because I, I hope maybe some new songs that we'll write together or maybe something cool will happen with one of these tunes and I can start to see a path for it live, you know, with this band. Uh, so many cool things. All right, so hopefully everyone's doing the same thing. They're having these amazing experiences with their music, either live or on the Zoom. Hopefully your Zoom journey, you're not getting discouraged because, man, I know how discouraging it can be. So don't get discouraged. Keep fighting. Keep rocking. Or whatever it is you're doing, you know, because it doesn't matter what kind of music you're playing as long as it's from here. It doesn't matter. Don't let anybody tell you anything about that kind of thing. If you're coming from here, it doesn't matter. All right, next time.